Hi everyone, today we're going to test out one of these, an EVC throttle controller on my BMW 535i. So what is a throttle controller and uh, why might I need one, I hear you ask. And let's face it, many of you watching this video already know this, so use the chapter function to skip ahead. But uh, basically, well, let's have a bit of a history lesson. Up until not that long ago, the process of accelerating a petrol engine was almost an entirely mechanical one. You pushed your foot on the accelerator, it in turn pulled on the throttle cable, an actual steel cable that ran through the firewall into the throttle butterfly, opened it up, more air came into the engine which allowed it to rev up and allowed you to accelerate. How quickly the engine revved up depended pretty well on how quickly you put your foot to the floor. And uh, you might be wondering why am I showing my MG? Well, in my MG, that's exactly how it works. But as technology advanced and we became more concerned about things like emissions and fuel economy, car makers decided that it was altogether better for them to start setting up accelerators to operate electronically. In this system, when you push the accelerator, a sensor in the accelerator pedal sends an electrical signal to the car's ECU, which then thinks for a while and decides how much it should open the butterfly on the throttle. The timing of that opening would depend on a few things. How uh, hot or cold the engine was, what driving mode you might have selected, and some other reasons as well. Now, there are certainly advantages to this system, the two that I talked about before. But with it comes the opportunity for programming in the ECU that sometimes doesn't quite get it right. And unfortunately, the car you've got in front of you, an early N55 engine BMW, so we're talking 2009, 2010, uh, suffers from what, a big problem. And that problem is that, at least in the comfort driving mode, which, to be honest, most of us drive in every day, and why shouldn't you? It's the default mode. The car starts in it every time. When you push the accelerator, well, it's not so much of a direct connection to the throttle as uh, sending a letter to a department asking, could I have some more power, please? The department then thinks, and six to eight weeks later, you might go a little bit faster. Now, in short, there's a very subtle let's just say probably half to one second delay between pushing that pedal and anything happening. And this is across a range of driving modes, whether you're setting off from a line, it's turning out from a junction, which can be unsafe, or just looking to accelerate out on the road. It's enough to turn this supposedly ultimate driving machine into a creator of great frustration. Now, to their credit, in 2013, BMW seemed to release some updates attempting to combat this issue, with varying levels of success, it seems, from reading forums. But uh, there's another problem to be had, and that's if, uh, if you're like me and you're purchasing these cars way down the track in 2022 or even 23, you have the question of asking, was this work done? And if it wasn't, can I convince the BMW service technicians to do it for me? You see, unfortunately, dealing with the BMW service department can, uh, well, sometimes be like pushing a rock uphill. They may not always take what you say seriously, may try and diagnose things in different ways. I mean, sometimes it might be right, but other times, well, I'm just trying to see if this software update's been applied. All the while, they're charging you hundreds of dollars an hour, well over 200 in Australia, to diagnose these issues. And there's no guarantee of success, which might leave you in a bit of a financial hole. And that's the circumstance I find myself in. But today, I'm gonna to try out a potential solution. One of these throttle controllers. Now, what do they do? Getting back to that question some minutes later. They bridge the link between the accelerator and the ECU. They modify the signal that that accelerator pedal sends out in an attempt to unlock your power, or unleash it as it says here, a little bit quickly, a little bit more quickly. Now, is it gonna be successful for this car? At this point, I don't know. So you're gonna come along with the ride as we test this thing out. It's 
the next step can be a little bit tricky, particularly if it's never been done before in your car, which it probably hasn't. Here's the harness here, and here's the connector. There's one push tab on this side and one in on the back. So what we want to do is reach in, release both tabs, and pull out. Okay, so I have it free. It was a bit tricky, but what I did, obviously it sits back here. When I was squeezing the tabs with one hand, I used the other hand. Just got a flat bladed screwdriver and pried in between this part here and the edge of the connector. Okay, now we've got our harness. We note the numbering on there. We've got our pedal. We note the numbering in there. Okay. And then the other side, we're going to plug into the body harness. Same thing. End of the harness for the controller and into that black trace there. We want to just stop and start the car. The body side of this uh, loom here is not numbered, so there is a chance that you can connect this plug the wrong way around. And if that happens, you'll get a series of errors on the dashboard. So we're going to start the car. Alright, so to me that's a good sign that I have things plugged in the wrong way. We'll switch that plug around and try again. Okay, plug switch around, let's try again. Alright, car stays running. Very good. And um, that fault will have to clear with a code reader. So unfortunately, you can get lucky or you can get unlucky. If you've got a code reader, it's not a hard problem to fix, but otherwise, well. So just be careful. Okay, so the fault has been erased. Now it's just a matter of reinstalling this in a way that's safe and usable. Okay, so I have the union tucked behind the accelerator. There's a little nick you can tuck it down into such where it should not move. And I've got unrestricted operation. Look, just take some time when you're doing this. I've got the cable running up through there. It's just dangling down for here, but uh, I will find another good spot for that to sit. Okay, so now we've got our <coughs> controller unit sort of safely um, sort of stowed somewhere. You've got to set it up. So on this particular controller, and all of them are sort of similar, there's a couple of modes and then there's a couple of, I guess, strengths of each mode. So this one's got ultimate where it will want to give more throttle than what you're putting on the pedal. A, which is uh, automatic mode, this is factory mode, so this is basically turning the effect of the unit off. Economy mode, which is, uh, I guess, deadening down the throttle so it will register less than you're doing with the pedal. Okay, everyone, so let's go for a drive. Now, it's actually a week later. A lot of these reviews, they sort of fit the unit and then they're all of a sudden uh, trying it out and trying to give us an opinion from their first go at it but uh, I've been using this unit now for five or so days so I hope I can give a little bit of a better opinion now to answer the million dollar question does this fix the throttle pedal delay issue that I have on this particular car the unfortunate answer is no it does not uh, it creates an interesting sensation where the short half quarter second, it probably only is a quarter of a second to be honest because when we anticipate those things they always go slow but that delay is still there. All that happens is after the delay the surge of acceleration is larger for any given pedal position. So from what I was used to pressing I would be getting a lot more acceleration um, so look that is a little bit unfortunate I was probably asking a little bit too much of a pedal commander to fix what ultimately is a software uh, mapping issue that was unfortunately engineered into the product by BMW um, but 
the EVC Throttle Commander has not solved that issue. Now, the question is, am I going to return the, the units? Well, I'm not quite sure on that yet. Supposedly, there's 30 days money back guarantee, so I've still got a few weeks left to go. I'll keep driving the unit around, keep, keep playing with the settings and see if I think I want to return it. Because there are some parts of the effect that I suppose are good. So the default comfort setting throttle mapping from BMW is quite doughy and with this I can wake it up. There are some situations where it's not just about off the line performance that matters. In gear type performance you only have to twitch your right toe on the accelerator and you'll get a lot more performance from the engine than you would otherwise. You'd otherwise you'd have to make a, a larger press which can be useful at times, can be comfortable at times, less work for more reward, I suppose. The adjustability as well could be played with, offers some benefits. To be honest, I've just done two big commutes up and down the coast of New South Wales and didn't really alter it at all. But I guess cruising on the freeway is not really why. Uh, well, to be honest, it is actually one of the reasons why this particular unit is marketed. They do market it particularly for those with diesels who are towing and want power to pass while you're towing which is always a bit of a risky thing um, and I suppose these commanders these these throttle controllers just give the user a bit more confidence I guess because they feel like they're getting more power out of the engine which we know that that's not what this unit does at all it's just that they don't have to feel like they're getting right deep into the throttle um, to get the power they need although in effect they are really tapping out there what their engine can give them particularly in the older diesels when they're towing a heavy caravan or boat or something like that um, but um, overtaking in this car really even in stock form is not going to be a big issue um, plenty of power on tap um, for me the reason to get this pedal controller was to just try and fix that that pedal delay and make the car a little bit more drivable around town give me a little bit more confidence at junctions and um, from what I've had of that unfortunately that issue is not really being solved uh, because what you get particularly uh, I might add when the steering wheel is turned is you come to a stop like so so we put our foot down nothing's happening and then we get lots of power thing just takes off now admittedly I was being a bit more of a hoon there than uh, would normally occur but it illustrates the principle and if you're a little bit unwary or you perhaps don't have the best abilities when it comes to controlling your own throttle that's the kind of situation you can find yourself in with one of these controllers and I've just really made a mistake there and got down a dead-end street Alright, so I'm out of that trap for new players, but uh, the point stands that someone who doesn't have the best pedal control is probably not going to be helped by this unit, because I guess all it really does is it just condenses the total travel of the pedal. Less push for more percentage. And particularly if you've got a car that, like mine, has got a mapping a mapping throttle issue and then also a bit of turbo lag uh, to contend with you can find yourself well making one potentially unsafe situation even worse if you don't quite know what to do when the power kicks in so is the throttle controller for me well if I'd known that it wasn't going to solve my issue I probably wouldn't have got it it still remains to be seen whether or not I keep it or refund it some parts of it are slightly enjoyable yes you do get the sensation of having more power because it's just being fed to you in a different way than what it is from stock yes there's that extra adjustability that you don't have with stock um, I have tried different types of sensitivity in the ultimate mode. I haven't gone for the automatic mode because I don't 
I don't see how that would be useful to my driving situation. Um, but I have dialed up and down the alternate mode and I've found that for me, the lower end of the scale is more useful. I don't like having the really twitchy experience and I don't think this car needs it um, because it always was so that once the accelerator, well, once this car got going, it seemed to have good enough response. It was just getting it off the line that was the problem. Um, so I've just been running it on two or three out of nine. But even so, if I go back to stock, am I going to be disappointed? I don't think so, not in a great way. And it's not going to make the problem that I had return because it was never solved in the first place. I guess the other thing to ask is can you drive sensibly with this is it all just go all the time and yes you can even with it um, in higher levels in the ultimate mode of sensitivity you can still drive sensibly still move with traffic I've never had any situation where for example I'm parking or something and I've been really worried that the car's just going to launch when I'm trying to just move it forward that the car's going to launch forward into a bollard or another car or something like that um, but in saying that you just have to drive it with the mindfulness that now the adaptability of your throttle has been changed and you are going to get more than you bargain for if you don't keep your right foot keep your right foot under control